This is Paul Ciccone, and today I'm going to teach you how to make your own virtual chorus video. We've seen them before. Singers record their parts at home, and we edit them all together in a Brady Bunch style video that looks something like this. But first, there are some steps I recommend you take before you start editing the video. Here's the workflow that I use for all of my projects with the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. It all starts with great audio recordings. I actually have the singers record the audio and the video separately. Recording at home by yourself is really hard and this lets the singers focus on giving the best possible vocal performance that they can. Here's how I do it. Each singer gets a video with a sheet music, a conductor, and their part playing back. It looks something like this. They wear headphones so they can hear the rehearsal track and sing along while recording into their iPhones or USB mic. This is really easy to do if your singers have a Mac with GarageBand. For those that don't, there are similar programs available for Windows. Next, it's time to mix the audio. You can hire somebody to do it for you, or you can use GarageBand, Logic Pro, or any other software that you're comfortable with. Once you've got a rough mix, it's time to send that back to the singers. Now that the singers have the mix, they can record their video. All they have to do is lip sync to the track of themselves singing. They don't need to wear headphones, and they can focus on giving good face, looking into the camera, and delivering a great performance. Make sure you have them play the mix loudly because we want all of their videos to have the same exact sound on them. This is the secret that makes the rest of the process so fast and easy. After all of that, you're ready to start editing. I use DaVinci Resolve because it has a lot of features designed to make virtual chorus work very, very easy and fast. You can download it for free from blackmagicdesign.com. All right, I'm here in DaVinci Resolve 17. This is the beta, and I'm gonna show you how to build a virtual chorus video. Here we go. I'm just going to select a bunch of clips that I've imported, and I'm also going to select my final mix file. And I'm going to put these items on their own timeline so we can sync them. So by having them all selected in my media pool at the top left, I can right click on them and just say create a new timeline using those clips. So it's going to ask me to name the timeline. I'm going to call this sync. I generally work with two timelines, a sync timeline in which I synchronize all the clips and an assembly time where I put the final project together. So if I zoom all the way out on this, you can see that I've got all my clips and I'm just gonna stack them uh, really quickly on top of each other. So you can see here, oops. And they're all slightly different lengths and it actually doesn't even matter if I get them uh, too close. All right, so now let's just see what those all look like. So there they are. I've got my, my final mix along with one, two, three, four, five video files and their respective audio files. I'm gonna select the whole lot of them and I'm gonna use the auto align command and I'm gonna tell it to align these clips based on waveform. It'll take just a second to think about it and then boom, all of them move right into place so they're all exactly synchronized for you. This is a huge time-saving feature, especially if you're working with larger choruses. The largest one I've done it with is about 72, 73 singers, um, and it really saved me hours of time. Now that you've got all of these clips synchronized, you start editing. So in my case, I work with an assembly timeline, and this just has the final mix on it. So if I wanted to say start editing clips at this point in time, Looks like it's at about 51 seconds. So if I click here, I'm going to put 51.00 into uh, my timeline viewer window. So you can see we're at 51 seconds exactly. I'm going to go to my sync timeline here. And in Resolve, you can have these timelines open at the same time and just switch back and forth between them. You can also stack, in the, stack them on top of one another if you want to do it vertically instead of in these tabs. So here I am in my sync timeline. I'm going to just click here in the numbers. The time code, I'm going to say 51 so that I'm at 5100 in this timeline um, as well as in the other one. So first, I'm going to go to our first singer on the top here. His name is Udit, and I'm going to just press the F key. What that does, it'll show me that exact frame in the timeline in Udit's clip here in the source viewer. So now I'm going to say, uh, use my in button or tap the I key to make that the starting point of the clip and the O key to make that the ending point. That's exactly where I want the clip to start and end. And then I can switch to my assembly timeline and I'm gonna drag just the video. These two icons that 
highlight here in DaVinci Resolve let you drag just the audio or just the video. If you drag the image, you get both. But we just want to drag the video, just the picture. Drop that on the timeline at 51 seconds. And because I did a match frame, and these were already in sync at 51 seconds on the other timeline, they're going to be in perfect sync here. Take a listen. Perfect. Now I just switched back to my sync timeline. I get my next singer, hit the F key for match frame, the I key for an endpoint, move the playhead, the out key, O key for out. And again, I just repeat this process until I get a bunch of singers lined up. He's in sync. It's a foolproof way to make sure that your singers are in sync. So again, F key, I key. Notice I've never moved the playhead. I'm staying right at the 51 second mark. So that's my reference point. I go here and I just drag my third singer onto this. He's in perfect sync. All right, two more. So F key for match frame. The I key gives me an endpoint. The out, O key gives me the out point on Jim here. We're gonna just drag him down. I'm gonna go back to my sync and I'm gonna get my last singer who's Kyle. I'm gonna hit the F key to bring me up to match frame right there. I and O for an out. Go back to my assembly and now I've got all of my clips. So one of the things that I can do is I can select all of the clips here and I can arrange them all, edit them all at the same time, or I can hit shift bracket to trim them all to the same length. So now that I've got them all at the same length, let's make a grid. All right, I'm gonna to go to the top left and click on effects library to open the toolbox which contains all of the video and audio transitions, titles, generators, effects in DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to click on the open effects category. You can see as you skim across any of these you can get a preview of the effect in the window on the right. I'm just going to scroll down and look for the video collage plugin. I've got a little star next to it because I've made it a favorite. I'm going to drag and drop that plugin onto the top clip in our stack. When you do you'll instantly see the four up view. I'm gonna click on the clip in the timeline, and then we're gonna to go to the inspector at the top right. If the inspector isn't open on your system, you can just show and hide it by clicking the word inspector at the top right. You wanna to go to the effects tab because that's where the effect we just added is. You'll see video collage up here. And there are two ways that you can use it. You can use it to create backgrounds and you can use it to create tiles. We're gonna do tiles first. I'll touch on backgrounds at the end of the video. Once I've selected create tile, I'm gonna preview the layout. Now the layout will show me however many boxes for the number of columns and rows that I have. So I can customize this and I can go all the way up to 99 rows and 99 columns. For the purposes of this, we just need to have four videos. You have controls to adjust the rounding of the boxes. You can change the margins as well on the top and the bottom. And you can change the spacing and a couple other parameters. So uh, have fun with this. Create a custom layout that uh, you think looks good. And I'm just gonna change my top margins, make those a little bigger. Then you can click on the tile button. So those were the global controls. And now I'm working on the tiles and I can work on all the tiles at once or individual tiles. The key here is that you need to set this plugin up for all of the tiles before you apply it to the other clips. So that is just a, a little gotcha. Here you can look at uh, custom size and shape. So I can have, for example, um, I can have box one span columns one and two, and I can customize that. Or I can have it start and end on different rows, so I can do a three up like that. So you can customize these however you'd like. We're going to go into tile styling, and we're going to just make this a nice dark red, and I'm going to apply a little bit of a border to these tiles. You can also turn on the drop shadow. So here we go with the drop shadow. You have control over the strength, the distance, the blur, um, every parameter that you would expect to have control over. All right, so that's the layout for our four tiles. I'm gonna turn preview layout off. Now you see we've got Kyle up in the first box. With the clip selected, I'm gonna to go to the edit menu at the top of my screen, and I'm gonna click on copy. Then I'm gonna select the rest of the clips and I'm gonna click Paste Attributes. And in this case, I only want to paste the plugin, the video collage plugin I want to apply to all of the other clips. So if I click on Jim here, 
in my timeline and I go to the effects in the inspector, I can say Jim is tile two. I can say Joe is tile three. And I can say that Aiden is tile four. Now I didn't do a custom layout with five boxes, so uh, I'm not gonna use the singer for now, so I'm just gonna delete him. But I do wanna put a background behind these guys, so let me go grab a background. I have a still image here, and this is just a JPEG or a ping of the John Lennon wall. And you can see I can zoom that up so that it fills a screen. And I'm gonna go to single viewer mode so that's bigger for you. And now you can see that I've got my grid built very quickly with four singers in perfect sync. Take a listen. In the line, Okay, once you start stacking up a lot of clips like this, I have four video clips and a background clip. Depending on the speed of your computer, you may get sluggish playback. There are two things at play. There is the speed of your computer and the speed of your hard drives. So if I was working on a project with 10, 12, or more clips, I'd start to experience some performance problems here. It would be really slow and lagging. Uh, so the way that you get around that is to use either caching or render files in place. The caching will work to a certain extent, depending on the speed of your computer, and it creates a red line on any area that thinks that it can't play back in real time. Minutes, how do you measure so when you go to play it, it will actually start turning that red line blue as it caches those frames. Now those caches are temporary files that it uses for playback. All right, They go away once you change or move anything. Um, so you can use caching to improve your playback performance. Or there's another way you can do it, and this is another new feature in DaVinci Resolve 17. I'm gonna trim this background up so that it fits right underneath my video, because I know this section is perfectly timed. I've got the grid the way I want it. So all I'm gonna do is right click, and I'm gonna turn this into a compound clip, and I'm gonna call it Grid 1. That creates one single object on my timeline that I have to deal with now instead of four or five. And then I'm gonna use the new Render in Place command. And this lets me create a final quality rendered file for this particular part of the timeline. It asks me where I want to save it. I save it. It takes just a second as if we were rendering our final output when we were done with the project. And now I've got a single piece of media here that will always play back in real time in my project. So use the render in place command. It's really handy. And don't worry, if you ever need to get back out, you can decompose the render file and then you can decompose the compound clip. So there you go, render in place. Now let's move down the timeline here. I've got another stack of clips, three clips and the background. This time the background is on top. And what I'm gonna do is show you how the video collage works in background mode instead of tile mode. And what it's effectively doing is it's cutting holes in the background image so we can see what's underneath it. In this case, we've got a four up again. I'm gonna do um, a custom layout here. So I'm going to go to my tiles menu and I'm going to do a custom size and shape. And I'm going to say that I want the first tile to end on row two. So it's going to take up the whole left side of the screen here. I'm also going to go to tile three and I'm going to do manual tile management and I'm going to mute tile three so that it disappears. All right, now let's turn preview layout off. And you'll see here that I've got my images poking through from below. So I'm going to go to Joe, and if you click the bottom left of the viewer here, you can turn on the on-screen controls that allow me to move him around. And I'm just going to resize Joe. We need to crop him because you can see he's bleeding over into the other boxes, right? Uh, so I'm going to crop the left. Oh, notice what's happening here. I'm cropping the left, but the right side is moving. Uh, there's a reason for this. The reason is because he shot this with the front facing camera on his cell phone, so the image is flipped. So we're just gonna click the flip button here in the inspector. And now when I crop the right side, you're gonna see it actually crop the right side. And I'll bring the left side in a little too. And now we're gonna go and get Aiden underneath, and you can see I can just drag and move him around. Again, that control is down here on the bottom left of the viewer to turn that on or off. You can also do it by the numbers in the inspector up at top here. So if I wanted to zoom in using the numbers, I could do that. And I'm just going to crop uh, the left side of Aiden out. And I'm going to crop the bottom up so that he's not in the 
pole behind or below him. And then let's bring Udi down and we're gonna scale him down a bit too. So now I've just got my three guys here in their squares. So this is a great way if you're just doing small grids that don't have a lot of people, um, to just put the background on top and you're effectively cutting holes in the background and then moving um, all of the other tiles underneath of it. Now the things that you don't get um, with this are you don't get things like drop shadows. So uh, there are benefits to using each mode. Here is that one playing back for you. It's time now to sing the story now. So thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. You learned how to auto align clips based on audio waveform. You learned how to use the video collage plugin to create grids and backgrounds. You learned how to turn on the render cache to improve your performance, create compound clips to clean up your timeline, and use the new render in place feature for finished grids. Thanks again for watching.